Namaste gozaimasu, baby. It's Glossu here. In this video, we're going to talk about the HiSig method for learning kanji. Indeed, we'll make a brief overview of what the Japanese writing system consists of and what the traditional method for learning kanji is, as well as to where it fails, in my humble opinion. We'll see what the HiSig method brings new to the table, and we'll also perform a small test on me to see whether the method is effective or not. Also, I will mention in the end whether this method could be of use if you're learning Chinese instead of Japanese. So, let's get going. So, those of you who've learned some Japanese already know that the Japanese writing system is a mashup. We've got two syllabaries, hiragana and katakana, which can be learned in a matter of hours or days. They are not that difficult to learn. However, there's also the kanji, which most foreigners have big problems with. The traditional method to learning kanji is road memorization, which means write them over and over again. And if you look at books for foreigners to learn kanji, that's what they present you. They present you the kanji. They present you several meanings that it carries. They tell you about its on and hun yomi, uh, which is two different readings of the kanji. And they ask you to write them several times so that you get into the habit and you get to know the kanji, right? Now, um, talking from personal experience, when I started learning Japanese and I used this traditional method, I learned Japanese for four years and they introduced us around 120 kanji per year. So if every year I, I had 120 new kanji, by the, by the fourth year I should know theoretically 500 kanji, right? Well, it wasn't exactly like that. By my fourth year, I was still able to remember the 120, 150 basic kanji. I was also able to remember the kanji that I had learned recently, but all the others in between, I couldn't decipher them. It's as if I had never learned them in the first place. I mean, sure, they could sound a bit familiar or they could look a bit familiar, but I had forgotten them. Um, so. I, I started wondering too if there was another method for learning kanji and I discovered the Heisei method which is presented in this book. So James W. Heisei um, and so Heisei thought, hey, what if we could, if I could find a method for Westerners and other people who don't know Chinese characters to know the Chinese characters just like the Chinese know. To, in order to, to help them learn afterwards the Japanese methods, right? And so this is basically what he did. He explains in this book a method that he, he himself thought out. What is this method about? Well, he realized that foreigners were, were bombarded with a lot of new information when learning kanji. They had several meanings. They had several different readings to, to, to learn. And on top of that, vocabulary with kanji. And uh, this results in, in short-term memory. Um, if you've learned recently, you remember it, but just leave it a few days and you already forgot it. So he suggests the use of mnemonics, mnemonics. And he suggests that you decompose the kanji into several different components, which he calls primitives. And uh, to make stories that relate these primitives to the meaning to one of the meanings of the kanji. So what he proceeded to do is he took all the Jojo kanji, all the common use kanji, and he assigned them a specific keyword in English, which should represent the meaning as close as possible to the kanji. And he ordered them in a way that kanji with the same primitives were introduced in, in groupings. So when you, you learn one part of the kanji and this part of the kanji appears in many other kanji, then those kanji will be learned together. What, what this achieves is that the Westerner or the foreigner will then know the writing system, will then know the alphabet just like if, if he were Chinese. He would uh, see the characters and they would speak to them to him with a meaning. Now what does the Heisig method achieve? Well, once you're through the book, which presents you all 2,000 plus uh, Jojo Kanji, then you should be supposed to 
see a keyword and be able to write the kanji associated with that keyword. So let's see if that's the case. I went through the whole book. Could I? Could I write 2200 characters? Let's find out. Okay, let's go on with the test. To the left you see Anki, which is an amazing piece of software I have used to learn the kanji along with the Heisig method. I will explain a bit more about it in a future video, and I'm going to use it to test myself too. To the right you see the blank piece of paper that I will be using to write the kanji. I'm sorry if my camera loses focus uh, when I write, hopefully it will not bother you too much and I will try to write a bit bigger than usual. Um, once I read the kanji, I will show the answer uh, for a split second. Uh, if that's too fast, just pause the video and you can compare if you don't trust my... Uh, <laughs> if it's a mistake or not. Anyway, so I'm not going to write the 2200 uh, common use kanji because there's no time for that. But I can do a sample of 50 of them. Let's make sure that they're completely random, picked up from the ones I, uh, I have studied. So... Heisig, the Heisig and is review. That should pick up all the 2200 common use characters, uh, get 50 of those and, and make a small test for me. So we'll build and I will start. I will go quiet from now on. Just enjoy. You can, uh, yes, uh, make fun of me every time I make a mistake. Anyway, let's go.
Okay, well that was it. It's such a shame that I missed those two right in the end. Um, yeah, stupid mistakes. <laughs> but yeah, as you can see, I've, I've been able to, to reproduce the vast majority of, of these kanji just from, from their keyword. This is what the HiSig, following the HiSig method would, would have you do once you complete it. And this is giving me a, an edge now that I'm actually learning Japanese at an advanced level because I don't have to be learning new kanji every time I learn new new words, right? It does happen occasionally when, when there's a word with a kanji that's not common use, but not even Japanese themselves are expected to know all of those words, so it's, it's not the same thing. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the test. Well, hey, that wasn't too bad, was it? Now, what if you're learning Chinese? Would I recommend you the high speed method? Well, I believe this method could still help you remember many of the characters. I mean, kanji are nothing else than Chinese characters imported, so there's lots of things in common. Now, a big difference between Chinese and Japanese is that most of the characters in Chinese only have one reading. Um, so, I would suggest that if you're going to use Heisig with Chinese, that you actually also learn the reading of the character alongside the character. Because unlike Japanese, it's not going to be that much of an information overload, and you're going to have to learn the readings eventually anyway. So, now if, if you're learning, if you want to learn both Chinese and Japanese, then it's a definite yes. Alongside the readings of the Japanese, you also need to learn the extra reading of Chinese. So, Heisig is the way to go. And for a person like me, who's trying to learn both of them, then yes, this has been a, an amazing method, something that's helped me out. And that's it for today. Hope you liked the video. Next time, we will see how you can set up your software in order to apply the Heisig method yourself and learn those 2000 plus characters. I could do it, you can do it. See you next time. Ciao, man.